The PGRU Top 50 that was published right before EVO gives us a nice shorthand for representing the current skill gap between top players. It also helps us know who the most dangerous ultimate players are at the moment. But although the list does a great job at both of these things, there are a few players who have had incredible performances since that list publication that you should be keeping your eyes on. So let's talk about three of the best non-PG yard players that you should know about. And just a reminder, if you're looking for the extra push to become a PG yard player yourself, check out ProGuys.com for on-demand coaching to get you prepared to compete at your next regional. Our next Pro Pass grants you free passes to our Play with Pros platform, along with a plethora of exclusive content all posted daily. So, let's first start by discussing Elegant, a name you're certainly familiar with if you followed Smash 4. The California Luigi main put together a ton of top 16 performances across the game's life cycle, with the peak of his career being a second place finish at GTX 2017, where he had a 10 game grand final set with MK Leo. Elegant was ranked as the 27th best player on the last official Smash 4 rankings. So, needless to say, hopes for him bringing that success to Ultimate were very high. And with a third at SoCal Chronicles back in January, where he outplaced other veterans of the past games like Larry Lur and Stroder, it looked like Luigi and newly picked up Villager would have lived up to expectations. But it was all downhill from there for quite a while. A 193rd placing in his home state at Genesis 6, losing to Jitty and G's was the first and the worst of it. Following that with the 49th at Frostbite, 65th at Prime Saga, and 33rd at Smash in Splash, made it almost certain that Elegant was not only going to miss matching his 27th from Smash 4, but that he'd probably not appear on the rankings at all. But with another chance to defend his home turf, Elegant rose to the occasion at the Mango. He finished second at the event, picking up a crazy list of wins over Kamei Raito, Sue, Nico, and Eon. This alone was not enough to erase all of the disappointing events that came before it, but it was sufficient to have him appear on the honorable mentions list for PGR. It's hard to pinpoint what exactly has changed since then, but Elegant finally seems to be back to his old form. At Low Tier City 7, one of the first A-tier events of the current PGR season, he showed off that the Mango wasn't just a fluke. He not only finished fourth outplacing ranked players like M. MVD, Mute Ace, Light, Esam, but he took two sets from Sam Sora on a set off Cosmos on his way there. His resume has kept up pretty great since then. 17th at EVO, 33rd at SmashCon, 17th at Shine, and most recently winning the C tier event standoff without dropping a set. He's also been incredibly consistent across these last couple of months, and he hasn't dropped a set to a player ranked lower than Mr. R this being a complete 180 from the last ranking period. The only thing I could say that's underwhelming about Elegant's performances since then is the lack of top wins outside of Low Tier City, which only amounts to Scat, Goblin, and Yeti. So, just from the brief list of performances we've got already, us here at Pro Guys can guarantee you'll be seeing Elegant's Luigi on the next PGR. Next up, let's jump over to Meister and his game and watch another character we don't end up seeing often. The 19-year-old has also been playing Smash competitively since Smash for his release, but didn't peak nearly as high as Elegant. Meister barely broke the all-time top 100 at 81st. He placed top 32 at nearly every large Smash 4 event that he was able to travel from Mexico for. His flawless win at Combo Breaker 2018 was easily his best performance on the road. But the days of Smash 4 are long gone, so how has Meister's game and watch done with the transition ultimate? Hmm. Short answer, pretty good. Long answer, good, but it took a lot to get there. The most glaring example of this early struggle was his 129th place at Genesis 6, losing to Shu and Nova Pixel. The weird part about this incredibly underwhelming performance is that it's sandwiched right between two incredible ones. The one preceding it was a second place showing at Retro Arena 64 in January, where Meister double eliminated Ned and lost a hard-fought 10-game set against current 34th best in the world, Yeti. The following event was a third place at the fifth entry in the Full Bloom series. Here, he picked up two quality wins over Esam and MVD, while pushing both Mars and Cosmos to the brink in winners and losers finals respectively. So, those silver and bronze medals showed that Meister was good at ultimate, but some still weren't convinced. Chalking his quality performances up to bracket luck or players inexperience against one of Nintendo's oldest characters. However, it was hard to continue to doubt Mexico's newest prodigy when he successfully defended his title as the Combo Breaker champ in May. On his road to win,
win the B-tier event, Meister grabbed another win over Esam and then showed Yeti that he had been studying since their last set by double eliminating him to win the event. Meister was looking like he'd be able to improve his previous ranking. Unfortunately, Meister has another uncharacteristically bad placement with 49th at Smash and Splash, losing to Frosty, Seth, and our good pal, Elegant. However, like Elegant, he did have a decent enough resume to be listed as an honorable mention for the previous list. So, that takes us all the way to the current PGR season, where it looks like Meister has finally been able to clean up those bad losses. Across the three large events he attended, fellow honorable mention Leffen is the only non-top 50 player that he's dropped a set to. His other losses only include MK Leo, Raito, and Mars, all very respectable losses. Meister has also built a much more diverse list of wins over the last season. During his third place home defense at Smash Factor 8, he 3-0'd 14th ranked Gluttony once and 20th ranked Abadongo twice. Then before losing the top 8 finisher Raito and MK Leo at EVO, Meister grabbed a set win over Puppe's Pokemon trainer and the recently struggling boy. And most recently, the Game & Watch absolutely crushed it during his top 8 finisher at Super Smash Con. He established that his wins from last season weren't just a fluke by beating Yeti and Esam once again. Meister then also picked up wins on Light and 8-Bitman before Mars stopped his loser's run at 5th. So, Meister's loss to Leffen does raise some minor red flags that the inconsistency may not have been completely flushed from Meister's system just yet. But everything else, the Game & Watch main has done recently points to him being able to potentially secure a top 30 spot for the next ranking period. And the final player we want to briefly highlight today, ladies and gentlemen, is Komei, the Japanese Shulk main. Like the two before him, Komei has also been playing his main since the Smash 4 days, with them finishing at 84th on the final rankings, this being three spots behind Meister and four spots ahead of Zachary. He's easily the least known player out of these three because he's only been able to travel out of the region for a handful of events across both games. However, Komei has done recently well at holding his own in Japan, being hailed as the 14th best player on the last Japan PR for Smash 4 and just sneaking in at 28th best out of 30 on the Japan Ultimate PR. Komei, unfortunately, was not even able to make the honorable mentions list on the first global PGR. His bid for making it this season is better because Komei was able to compete at EVO in Vegas and Switchfest in Cali already, but his spot from the rankings is far from secure. So, let's talk about what the Shulk main has going for him before jumping to the negative side. Komei recently became monumentally more well-known overnight for being a part of the Japanese domination at Switchfest. All of the top four finishers at the event were from Japan, despite some of the world's best talent being there, such as Mars, Light, and Gluttony. On his run to third place, he grabbed wins over Wadi's Rob, Mars Zero Suit, and eliminated Shu Tone, the highest ranked PGR player from Japan, currently sitting at the fifth best in the world. The other semi highlight of his current PGR season was his 33rd at Evo, where he beat Mute Ace, being his only other top 50 win from this period. And we only say semi highlight due to the fact that he lost to Vintendo, a Duck Hunt main from California who is still looking for a breakthrough of his own. But unfortunately, the bad win don't stop there for the Shulk. He's put up exclusively underwhelming showings in region, appearing to stagnate in the Japanese hierarchy, losing to players like Ocean, Ken, Paichi at local events. So the question if Komei will be able to make appearances on the next ranking is unfortunately still one we don't have a concrete answer to yet. Before this month is out, we'll get to see if his Switchfest performance is the new norm for him, and if his brief stint in the US will help him out when he returns back home. And that about does it for us over here at Pro Guys with this analysis. You know, there are so many tremendous players on the cusp of greatness right now in Ultimate, so it was just quite difficult to pick just three. Let us know down in the comments below which rising stars you want to hear us talk about next. Stay tuned right here on Pro Guides for future player spotlights as we get closer and closer to the second PGR rankings. Make sure you drop a subscribe on the channel and get those notifications so you can be the first to up your Smash game right here with Pro Guides.